Hello, my name is Gabriele. I'm a director and I survived the film school. <laughs> Where are you? Where? I'm in LA. I'm... I guess that makes more sense since I just saw you a couple days ago. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have assumed you were in uh, Sicily or something. Yeah, no, I was. I came back from France a few like a week ago. I was there for like um, five days for a, for a wedding of an AFI uh, alum. How about you? What have you been up to? Well, I work in I like the space that you saw that new space. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm in the alumni center now, mm -hmm. which is cool because I've been here so long, so I know so many alumni. Yeah, uh, and it's kind of like the career services area, which we never really had until until this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just kind of like brainstorming with recent grads and talking about like, you know, how they can figure out their first entry into the industry. It's really, really focused on writers, producers, directors, because they they have it the hardest, as you know. Mm -hmm. I do know. <laughs> the other disciplines, it's, there's a lot more structure to editing, to production design, to cinematography. <clears throat> you can work your way up. You're like, Man, I feel like I think the directors have it the hardest. But... Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to talk about. I agree. I agree. Because <laughs> it's like also like going to AFI, you know, especially because it's so intense and it's so structured for two years and then it just ends and yeah. you're just like, what do I do? You don't even know like where to go like on certain days, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and for us, it was, uh, I guess also the year after, uh, but the pandemic started um, almost right after. So it was really a really strange time. So you graduated 2019. Um, I got there officially in September, which meant that March 2020, um, the, the pandemic started. Um, so so it yeah, was... it's hard. It's hard to like get some traction going, right? When yeah, funny enough, the pandemic got me a job. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll talk about it. Um, oh, but... <laughs> okay. No, we'll talk about that. Yeah, let's 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 back it up a little then, um, because. I know you went to school before AFI, right? You went to London. Yeah. So I, I went to I, I moved to London when I was nineteen years old, and I, uh, um, I went to the London College of Communication, and I studied film there. It was like general film uh, theory. You were supposed to do everything, but I was very stubborn since the beginning, and, and I just did directing the whole time. Um, but it was, it was a good experience. I'm very happy to not to be in London anymore, to be honest. <laughs> it's not my, yeah. Also when I moved there, I couldn't even speak English. So it was very difficult. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you, when, you didn't know any English when you went there? I, I knew a little bit, yeah. but I, I wasn't very good at it. In Sicily, they don't teach you English very well. <laughs> it's just not, it's not. <laughs> Is it just from TV, just from watching shows? No, shows shows are dubbed. I don't oh. I don't watch shows. I didn't watch shows in in English. I would watch everything in Italian. Uh, <laughs> now now people are in Italy are starting to watch shows and and, and films in in the original, but um, but they, it used to be only dubbed. So, wow. So you knew you wanted to be in film at an early age. Yeah, I mean, when I was in uh, in high school. I will write a lot. I wrote a, a like a small novel when I was seventeen. A small uh, novel, a small I mean, novel. It was like a 200, 200 page novel. Oh, okay. I got also. I mean, I, I. This is my problem with with the work I do. I never really. If I'm not a hundred percent happy, I just, I just, I just hate it, and <laughs> and then I don't really try to do something with it. Sometimes. Uh, only lately I, 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 this has changed but for that novel I did receive two requests for publication but it was a small uh, small companies as well, how do you call it in English um, Publish, publishers yeah yeah yeah. they were very small I, 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 I would have needed to help as well not much but help a little bit and so in the end I didn't do anything but yeah I, I really liked writing and, um, and then there's this course I did in high school about filmmaking that got me into like real filmmaking and into the idea of actually doing it so i will say yeah very early on uh i i knew i was gonna direct in fact that's why i moved to london without any plan because i didn't know when i when i was there i didn't know what i was gonna do 
uh, exactly I knew that I was going to look for a school uh, where I could Oh, start. you moved to the city first, then you found a school? Yeah. You moved yeah. to the city first thinking I'll, I'll work I'll as a director something. or I'll find... I'll find... Uh, I wanted to be a director and I'll find something. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I moved there that's, first. <laughs> that's pretty, uh, pretty bold. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I moved also because I knew that the, I was going to do something outside of Italy, and I think it was a good. I thought it was a good idea to learn English first as well while looking for schools. So, so uh, I went there and I started actually learning English there. So you're learning English and you're learning like the basics of filmmaking while you're there at the school. Yeah, it's funny because my you know my first project at, at this school in London was with Charlie Heaton. It was the the guy from Stranger Things. So. Oh yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah, it was right before he became famous. <laughs> I did a project with him. Like he acted in your in your film. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was called the it was a sound design project. So we were shooting something without uh, recording sound, and then we have to make the sound in post. And so it had no dialogue or anything. And uh, and yeah, I saw this guy. It really, it was funny. I really liked his face. I saw it like in website and stuff. I I really liked his face. He didn't reply to my first message. I insisted. I sent him a second message. He finally replied. He got for the interview, um, and it was clearly the the best. It was it was really good. And I was that one of his first things as an actor? Uh, I don't think it was. He had done small things, and then soon after he did Netflix. The funny thing is that he was a big fan of a uh, of a band, uh, in which my roommate was in, and he would go to concerts. So I will see him at concerts, and I remember this concert in which the, it was very loud. He was trying to tell me about this Netflix thing. And, uh, and you know, my English was still bad and there was a lot of music. So I will hear Netflix. I was like, I don't think that's true. And then like months later or a year later, I, I found out that he's on this huge uh, show. So you must have his contact info, right? I have his. I, I con- <laughs> when I did my thesis film at AFI, I contacted him to be my, <laughs> my lead actor. And he replied and then he kind of stopped replying. Uh-huh. Uh, we we even got in contact with this agent and then nothing happened <laughs> well you you had him first you let's just we'll, <laughs> right. we'll give all the uh all of the success to the, your credit yeah i i, I discovered the guy i have <laughs> i have the, i still have the short film that horrible short film i made oh you should put that out online that'll get some hits right. some of your early work <laughs> so that the school in london was like a four-year like an undergrad it was a three-year three-year program three years Okay. And yeah. you got to make a lot of films? I made one, two, I made four films. Wow. It was two in the first year and then one the second year uh, and then one the third year. Yeah. So um, when you finally started making films, did it just cement like, oh yeah, this feels right. This is what I want to do. I will say that at the beginning, I was still, when I when I got to London and I started making the movies, I was still trying to find my voice and I was still trying to understand. I thought I thought I knew what my voice was and uh, I, will, I will tell stories that were very intellectual and uh, very conceptual. And if I think about it, I, I, I cringe because those movies were really terrible. And then a few things happened. Uh, in the, a couple of things happened in the last uh, in the last year. Uh, I think uh, I think I, I generally just matured. I was I was just yeah. trying to understand what I wanted to do. I watched the Faces by John Cassavetes, and that really changed a lot. And uh, and then I started making movies that were much more personal. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that movie that I made in London the last year was a very personal movie. It was about my family. It was about the the breakup of my parents. Uh, um and uh, and that really changed uh, things for me because then that's that that became the new thing <laughs> the new thing that that uh, that I started making something that was very personal and intimate and and finding trying to find this this truth um investigating my own myself and my own past and my experience and all this stuff yeah so but before that those these intellectual films you were making what what were those based on? What were they inspired by? Or was it just other movies you saw that were intellectual? 
I don't know. I think I don't know if they were inspired really by anything. I mean, one film that I wanted to make or either make was about the apocalypse. It was just things that didn't make any sense. <laughs> the one that I made with Charlie Eaton was uh, it was about this guy that he lives in a very uh, noisy world, where in this world uh, everything is like diverse. For example, your alarm. You don't wake up because the alarm starts ringing. You wake up because the alarm stops ringing. Is the silence <laughs> that is the silence that, uh, that? I mean, I like. I kind of like the that. I mean, I also like the concept of it. <laughs> yeah, there's something there. Yeah. Everything's in everything's in the execution, right? It's like how you do yeah. it. But yeah, but it's also I don't know. For me, it was like it's like these kind of movies that rely so much on these concepts are interesting. The first half of it. Mm-hmm. then i get so bored because it's like i don't i don't feel really emotionally engaged i feel like intellectually engaged but that doesn't last that much right then it's um, like who are the characters and like what do they want and yeah where, exactly. where's the heart where's the yeah and this movie what will happen is that for whatever reason that is not explained in the movie all the sounds gradually like they 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 stop and there's complete silence and charlie eaton in this complete silence uh, is able to hear his thoughts and that drives him crazy and so he just starts breaking everything in the house because he's just trying to make noise to stop himself from from hearing his his own thoughts i mean i will say like based on i haven't seen the movie i'm gonna hold judgment but based on that concept there's something there that's very relevant to today i mean i'm sure back then too of all the distractions we have around us all the time that really do keep us from, you know, going in or inside and listening to our own thoughts. Yeah. I don't criticize so much the the concepts that I was choosing, uh, not the, not the concept uh, themselves. I I guess I criticize myself for, as I said, relying so much on that and forgetting about the characters and their humanity and everything. Uh, I think if I had managed to, to, to somehow get both, uh, um i will feel better about those movies but i didn't yeah oh um, i i think you should dust off that idea and you know see if <laughs> now 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 with your you know more mature filmmaker brain like you reapproach it and see what you got but yeah. you went you went like way the other way cassavetes like really grounded really personal mm-hmm. was that scary the first time you did that no, it, it felt right because those are. I think when I made those, when I made that th- first film, there was more like, it was it was not really more like I this, but yeah, more that more intimate and personal. I understood why I was making movies and mm-hmm. I was telling stories, and it's funny because I had spent uh, already years trying to make movies, so like a few years, but only in that moment I understood why I was doing that and uh, and and it felt very important for me and before it just felt like uh, it, it was just um, it was just for my own ego I just want to feel so much better about myself I'm so smart because I come up with these things um, uh, but then it became it became just important for for me for my personal life and also for those people that were touched by 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 the stories that I was telling how did your parents feel about that uh, no. <laughs> they were shocked because i i reported lines uh, that have been said uh and stuff like that so it's always difficult i mean my parents will not watch this <laughs> so <laughs> i can say this um uh, but a, a movie that i'm working on right now that i've been i've been writing for five years uh, since afi actually started with mm. uh, sandy stern yeah uh, he's still here yeah, yeah, I saw him at the F5 when a oh, cool. few days ago. And um that 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 that's even more uh, more scary, a little scarier in a way, because um in the in that movie that I that I made in all, in London, I was more focused on the child, and this movies movie that I'm making, I'm focusing on the parents. Mm. Um, so I'm a little concerned about them watching it. Obviously, um, it's not always easy, <laughs> right? But but I think it's worth it. And also to be honest, also with with people that are so close to you in a way. Yeah, well, that's interesting. How like as you age, then you're the same story. You just change perspective, and it can really unlock something. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. 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 
So you did three years, you go to this school, you direct four movies, you get a lot of experience. Why did you feel like you needed even more school and more debt? <laughs> um I guess I guess I just felt um this is a good question. I don't remember my 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 mind uh, like my the state of my mind in that moment. I think uh, um I felt uh, um I've always used the film school. I mean obviously the two film schools that that, that I did I used them because they allowed me to make movies and to and to meet people. Those were the main two things. Yeah. More than the, to be honest, more the professors teaching me that if I were actually very important. Uh, but more than that, it was about making movies, having the possibility to to make movies and meeting people that are talented. I think America was for me specifically AFI. Um, I knew first of all that I wanted to get to America. I remember when I was in high school, I would call the American schools during um, recess and, and ask information. And then I understood that it was a little too much uh, at, at that point to go to America. So I kind of went to London as a mid-step. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, That's kind of halfway, yeah. Yeah, and um, so I knew I wanted to get there. And obviously going to school is, is a good way. Uh, if you can get to AFI, which is, you know, one of the best schools in the world, film schools in the world. And and I knew that I was going to make movies there. I was going to be there as a director. And I was going to meet a lot of people that have been, you know, have, that are very talented. And uh, I felt that was it was going to be a very smart choice. Yeah. Did you, did you know anyone that had gone through AFI? Or you just knew the reputation? I knew just the reputation. Um yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know anybody. Um, I and did AFI? Started... Does AFI, because it's in Los Angeles, does it represent Hollywood filmmaking? Uh, to the I outside world, it... to like you know, you're from Sicily. I didn't think it did. I think when you hear about AFI, you you know immediately the first names that that come to mind are David Lynch and Aronofsky and uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it, it doesn't really feel like Hollywood, you know. Uh, from the from the outside, I don't yeah, know. yeah. It's just we we're the only film school that are actually is in Hollywood. Was, but you're right; it's we don't really have a Hollywood reputation. Our reputation is based on the success of the alumni. So mm -hmm. as we get, yeah, we it used to be you know David Lynch, Aronofsky. You think of the Paul Schrader; those are the names, right? Terrence Malick, you know, total auteur indie filmmakers. And then if you think the more recent ones. It's like Patty Jenkins and she did Wonder Woman, you know, and uh, yeah. Sam Esmail did Mr. Robot. And I mean, Ari Aster is kind of a throwback in a way, but, you know, he's got big commercial success. All right. So you apply to AFI, you get into AFI, right? And was there any gap between London and AFI or was it boom, boom? Yeah, there was like <laughs> there uh, was oh. a gap in which I, I worked in a, to, to just, you know, and my experience in London, I worked in a pub, uh, and the name of the pub, uh, classic British, it was the famous cock. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that a famous one? I feel like that was in uh, an Edgar Wright movie or something. I, I don't think so. Honestly, no, there's just a lot of. I really don't think so. there's a lot of cock bars in. in London. Yeah, probably the it was famous so cock. There was this, uh, there was, there were a lot of like these Polish uh, guys that were like two managers. And I remember once there was, uh, there was a, a rat in the basement and uh, that had been like scaring people for a while. And then one of these Polish guys, he comes up and he says, ah, oh, by the way, I, I killed the, I killed the rat. It's like, how? how? <laughs> and he was like, well, they probably ate some poison. So he was like not feeling, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, kind of like that, and so I grabbed him and I, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I and I broke his neck with his hands. <laughs> so that's the kind of characters that you were working with. Yeah, that was the famous cock. It's like a, it's like a Guy Ritchie movie. Uh, yeah. So you, you were you work in a place like that though. You you end up with like probably so many stories that you can use the rest of your career, right? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. I guess. I guess there was some. Uh, it was. It was very interesting to see. You know, the guys that will, will come every day, the kind of people. So yeah, I guess you, you do get some. Some. some the the reach, 
the those rich you know men that will like flirt with you at every, mm. every right. time. yeah 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 <laughs> with this uh, young uh, bartender or no what do you call it in uh, like wait i don't know what do you say no, bar- bartender bartender, bartender yeah bartender yeah um so you did that for how long a year i did no i did that for a little less than a year because uh i actually as soon as i finished i focused on the application for afi i spent two months of that on that application um i was working mostly at night because i i, I always i've always worked better at night and i would just stay awake like from mid from uh, i would work from like 11 p.m until five on this application i spent wow. a lot of time on it i uh, I it almost ended my relationship that that ended later <laughs> anyway because I moved to Los Angeles, uh, but it almost ended before because of um, because of that. That's and what AFI I, does AFI ruins relationships whether in the application form or when you come here. <laughs> yeah, it always does. I've done too many cases. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that speech like on one of the first days where it was probably Betsy or Natalie or someone was like, if you're if you're married or if you're with someone right now break up <laughs> yeah I, I don't remember that but it's not difficult to imagine because yeah uh, i think that the you know it's uh, afi for relationship is like covid for relationship it, if you stay in the relationship it means it's very strong because mm-hmm. uh also too many people broke up during covid as well yeah yeah it's gonna make it really intense and yeah it'll either be really strong or dead yeah so you get in you get in you get accepted that's a huge move, right? You had never been to Los Angeles or the States? To Los Angeles, I my first time was for the interview for AFI. You, you flew out for the interview? Yeah, I came here for the interview. Wow. Um, I had an experience with Scientology as well on that. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Did you go to the wrong building? <laughs> no, I, I, I was in Hollywood Boulevard. There is a Scientology Information Center in Hollywood Boulevard. And I, I didn't know much about Scientology and I was just walking on the first night i was there the interview was the day after and they were like oh we're about to show a movie do you want to see it like i have nothing to do let's watch i love movies yeah that's why i'm here movies let's watch this (laughs) (laughs) and i go there and they take me to this little theater they had on the short journey to the theater they asked me where i was from i say italy and i get to the to the theater and it was empty so only me and they they start the movie and it's dubbed in italian no uh, way that's a yeah, that's kind yeah. of a classy move yeah yeah and they, i watched this uh, 30 or 40 minute movie about uh, ron hubbard you never see his face in the movie um what is this people talking about him it's it's like you you only see him from the back <laughs> like it's shot in a way that you never saw never see you see his figure but you don't see his face and then after when I when I left uh, uh, the theater when the movie was over, this this person tried to convince me to join Scientology for like an yeah. hour. And anyway, you were like, "No, um, I'm signing up for a different cult. It's called AFI." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, so I the first time was during the interview, and I was actually a little scared of LA the, before I arrived because I had no idea what it would be like. And then as soon as I arrived, I loved it because it's, it's so similar to Sicily. It felt like home. In what way? I mean, the weather, first of all, and the colors. I don't know how to describe it. Just the, the, the colors of LA, they feel so much like Sicily. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I spent almost five years in London, which meant that mm. uh, gray, rain. Yeah, no, no colors. Yeah. Yeah, no colors. And then I get to uh, Los Angeles and there is the ocean. I mean, I didn't see the ocean at the time, but there's the ocean and it's hot and all this stuff. So it was very nice. So it's like, it's invigorating. So then, then when you get here for the interview, you must really, really want it at that point. Yeah. 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 I really wanted to get in. I, I had a good feeling because I thought the interview had, had been pretty, had gone really well. Um, but yeah, I, I really wanted to 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 come here. Who was in the interview? What was the interview? Who was in it? Who did it? Peter Markham and uh, the production designer had... Joe Garrity. Yeah. Oh, that's... Wow, cool. Two discipline heads. Usually it's just one. 
Yeah. You remember anything that Peter Markham asked you? He's he asks hard questions. Um. Yeah. Actually, during that interview, he quoted a lot my personal statement, uh, mm-hmm. and he asked me questions about my personal statement. I think at some point, uh, and the person in my personal statement, I had written that I felt like um, something. I don't remember exactly, but something like um this need of searching for for the truth and the truth is feels like an emotion more than more than words and i think i remember him asking me about this specifically what i meant and uh, uh how how was that related to my movies and stuff like that yeah did he ask you about books that you are reading or that you've read he asked me about the leopard mm-hmm. um yeah because and it was actually very lucky because i am the the writer of the leopard is uh, a far like relative of mine so i played that card immediately. <laughs> <laughs> even if he wasn't you should have just said it because nobody's gonna fact check you <laughs> exactly like it doesn't matter <laughs> so that must have really impressed peter huh <laughs> i guess <laughs> that's um, great but yeah no it was it was i guess i could i could tell that it had gone pretty well that the interview went pretty well so. yeah all right so you get and we're gonna we gotta kind of accelerate this you know this journey because we gotta get to after film school life but i do yeah. want to hear about i think the actual film school experience is important and yeah. this is this is the graduate film school this is you know quote the real film school not to belittle the london film school which i'm sure was yeah. great but this was like also involves a huge move right how hard was that part just like the you know moving thousands of miles away i i the move from palermo to london was more difficult i think from Why? Sicily to london was more difficult it was the first time i moved i was ah. very young and then uh, um from london and los angeles was also hard it was not as hard because i go from this big city to another big city from right. london to los angeles and uh, you're more I, familiar with the language then at that point right yeah 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 yeah. And um and yeah, that's also a big aspect. Yeah, I was I, I could speak English. Uh I did leave a, a relationship basically in London that was that was uh, that was hard. Um but did you I leave, did you leave that, a note or something? Did you, or did... <laughs> I left a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I left a cat in London. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Um so so yeah, I will say that that when I think about like my heartbreak, uh, was Palermo most easily to London more than London Los Angeles. That was a little easier, a little uh, more, a little more excitement probably coming here. Yeah, because it was it was this this huge opportunity for me. Like getting into AFI was like bingo. It was like it was great. Uh, being in Los Angeles was a dream. As soon as I got to Los Angeles, I found out that my from my house uh, I could see the Hollywood sign. Which for me was crazy. Like now I see the only sign. I'm like I don't even look at it. But right. uh, when I go here, I, I in the morning, the first morning, I look at, out the window from my bedroom and I see the Hollywood sign. I was like, this is crazy. I could see the Hollywood sign from from my window. It is. It is great. My first job working in in Hollywood. I grew up in L.A. Right, and but I didn't grow up anywhere near Hollywood. Mm-hmm. But my first job working in the industry was at like across the street from Paramount Studios. Mm-hmm. And Paramount's the only studio that's like in Hollywood. And if you look north on a clear day, you see the Hollywood sign. And I remember just being on that little lot and I would look up and I'd be like, oh my, I would tell the people, like the other PAs I was working with, there's the Hollywood sign. And they'd be like, you know, it's like, it's like you just said, you're, everyone else is over it. They're like, yeah, yeah. we know that's for tourists. <laughs> She's like, yeah. no, you guys, no, this is why we're doing it. You know? Totally. Yeah. That's how it felt. It was, yeah. It was amazing. I feel like I made it. It was like, no, it's like, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm so far. <laughs> You made it to the sign. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. So talk about those first days at AFI and, you know, how, how are you, what's going through your head? How are you feeling? You're meeting all these people from all over the world. Um, Although that I, was the, wasn't that the heavily Italian year? Yeah. Yeah. Six Italians. That was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> like, no, Ita- there was one Italian the, d- the year after. No Italians. They the- no, sorry, the year before, and no Italian the year after. And then six, six six Italians. Funny enough, I knew already one of them. <laughs> Which Daga. one? Daga. Oh, Daga. Okay, yeah. I knew already Daga um, before before AFI, which is funny. Um, 
but so the first days, I don't know, I felt like, I felt like my, obviously I was very happy, but especially because if it felt like I was just walking on my dream. Um, there's like Rob Spera that, that now is not that they find anymore, but uh, he, I remember his, his first class. I don't remember exactly how he phrased it, but basically this whole point was, I can feel the weight of your dreams. And wow. uh, and that 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 felt so so strong, and I, that's that's how I, I felt um, at first. It felt like these dreams uh, that that are I'm just I'm doing it. I'm, I'm on this path towards uh, reaching that that dream. That's that's really that's really beautiful, and it must have been nice to have to find those people like Rob there that kind of like embraced and and knew what you were going through, and yeah. You know, are basically like supporting it and encouraging it. Yeah, Rob was uh, was was just uh, was just amazing. Uh, uh, I talked to him uh, not too long ago. A few uh, by email, uh, and he was still the same. The same I don't know the, <laughs> the yeah. same passion, the same uh, warmth. Uh, it was uh, it was it was a really great teacher. I think it was probably one of the the best teachers I've ever had in my life. Yeah, I think. All the best directing graduates say that <laughs> they they know they know that what you know yeah. they know they got something great out of that that guy and he's he's just the best. I'm glad he's still doing it even if he's not doing it here. Yeah, I, I can push people to his private classes. So, mm -hmm. do you remember um, Real Day? I remember actually. I remember you on Real Day. <laughs> yeah, because he, because I remember. I said, what do you huh? what do you remember? Because I, uh, because my my reel was slightly longer than it was supposed to be. I sent you an email beforehand. There's always you, that guy. There's always yeah, one. You made a joke. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> and uh, and then I I showed it, uh, and then you you said something nice because it was a scene that you probably don't remember, but it was a scene in which there are two parents uh, fighting, and it was all in one shot. It was like this four minute one or. Mm -hmm. um, and and then you said that felt real, and I was like, oh, nice. Wow. Oh, so this was from your film about your parents. Yeah, that was that that film I mentioned, uh, the the last movie I made in London. Yeah, but was was there? Because I've heard it from other people, like the anxiety of that day of showing your work. But most a lot of people have never seen their work on the big screen at that point, mm -hmm. and then showing it to your colleagues that everyone is kind of trying to impress, and you're thinking about teaming for your first film. Were you going through any of that? I always have anxiety when I have to, when people are looking at me. For me, I was not anxious about showing the movie. I was anxious about having to stand up to say my name in front of everyone, and uh, and that's it. That was the part. I was speaking uh, in front of everyone, showing the movie. I, I was kind of con I was confident about that scene that I was showing. I yeah. thought people were gonna were gonna like it, or that I thought it was a strong scene. Uh, so um, I was happy to show it actually. Do you remember like the like at the next break after we showed your scene? Like, did you have a lot of people coming up to you, talking to you? I don't. I, I definitely had some people coming up to me. I don't remember any anyone specifically. Yeah. I do remember that because the scene was in one shot. I, I a lot of cinematographers didn't work to work with me because they thought I was gonna make movies all in one shot, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of true. I did make movies with long. Did you? Was it? Is that your thing? You like that? I love long shot. I it, my third disciple had an eleven minute oneer. What? Yeah. That's like the whole movie almost. Yeah, it was like it was. I think eight shots in total. I think or six. I don't remember something like that. Wow, we we built uh, in the sound studio. We built a an apartment. Um, Betsy said it was the biggest set we ever had. I mean, I was, uh, and we shot we shot an eleven minute vine. There is actually I I ended up having a cut in the middle because I, I just wanted to change um, takes to take take. Uh, um, but yeah, we we do we did we did do that. Okay, so. You you made it through. You made it through two years. Of AFI. <laughs> what were you thinking about, like, um, what your post AFI life was going to be, or were you someone that was just like, I'm in the moment. I'm here to make this these movies. I'm just going to like study the craft as best I can, not thinking of how do you start a career and all those kinds of things. 
yeah i'm not very good at planning those things so <laughs> i was very much in the moment and as i was finishing a fight what i thought about was my next film and that we shot something uh, in sicily actually a few months after afi um but did you just finish it recently i no oh okay i saw I was... there was something else Aquare Kios Kyuso? Yeah, yeah. That was that was in uh yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. That was we shot it in uh 2019 at the end of 2019. Then there was the pandemic and we kind uh-huh. of paused the thing for a while because at the beginning we were like, let's let's wait for this to just end, the pandemic to end quickly. And mm-hmm. then it didn't, and then we kind of it just we finished it basically in 2021. Right. We actually shot it at the end of 2019. Right. I was thinking of that, and then uh, as I was working on that, um, not too long after, there was you know first signs of the pandemic and stuff like that, and then March twenty twenty is when everything uh, went down in America. Um, and before yeah. that, in Italy, it was just it was already happening. Uh, yeah, so, Italy got hit hard. Yeah, yeah. early. And this is why I got my. This is why I got my 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 job actually that i did for the last three years which is what which is uh i worked as a dubbing director for netflix uh, projects uh, also disney and amazon studios oh no way yeah you're directing voice actors yeah 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 yeah. i from uh, foreign languages into english um the, the the reason why i started is because in italy uh because it was hit so hard the um, uh, they they couldn't deliver the deliver a a dub for a movie from an American movie into Italian, so Netflix asked the company in Los Angeles they could do it, and this company in Los Angeles found me. You know what's sad though is, and it's sad for me too because I've done a little voiceover work. Is um that that business is gonna go away because of AI? That's one of the first ones to get hit. Yeah. Have you seen any any of these videos of? How they they can take an actor's performance. They could take me sa- talking right now in English. AI will listen to my voice, and then they'll do okay. Let's do the Italian version, and then it'll they'll just it'll be my voice speaking Italian, and then there's another program that will change my mouth, the video of it, yeah. so I'm saying the right words in Italian, and it's seamless. What, wait, do you, quickly, do you know Christina Diamantara? Is that yeah? Is she she's class? the one that that to this that uh she 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 worked for the same company and oh, okay she's working she's the one that uh gave them my name got so it I okay because i knew she was doing that so that makes sense that's the connection yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. okay cool so okay so you went to afi because you wanted to it was a place where you could keep making films and meet people yeah i know you made films because i know it's part of the program did you get to always make the films you wanted to make uh first year yes my the, the if, unfortunately i think uh, the worst film i made at afi the, my collaborators would not like this <laughs> for me to say this no but you're you're critiquing yourself right yeah yeah um i it was my my thesis film i yeah. don't know my worst film but i think it's the farthest from what i wanted to make um, how do you think that how do you think you got there too much I development think- I think uh, um, it's a it's a mix of things. I think uh, I made some wrong choices. I think I made some wrong choices in terms of the story. I think uh, I went with something that was not exactly it was me, but it was not exactly what I'm best at. And uh, I did it in circumstances that were not were not allowing me. I'm not gonna be very specific. <laughs> I know why. Yeah, I get but, it. But but I'm not. But the, in circumstances that were not allowing me to to be at my hundred percent, um, as a consequence, I think uh, then you know if there are like one or two things that go wrong at the beginning, then it just can, it can get worse and then worse and then worse. Um, for reasons related to production, we were not able to do additional photography. Mm uh so we did not have that so there were a series of things things didn't go didn't go well in that project unfortunately um yep. it's still like a movie that uh it, if you watch it on the big screen it's still a movie that i think has, has a very strong uh, atmosphere um i think is missing the most important part which is emotions i think uh, i did not manage to to deliver that 
um and um yeah at what at what point do you like start to realize that because i i the first year is so like go 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 and you go from film to film to film and you don't have time to really like if you're going on, on instinct a lot which sometimes is good but with thesis it's it's the second year is drawn out right yeah is there a point where you go oh this is not quite working but you're it the train's already left the station and you have to make this movie I I realized that a few times <laughs> because I think uh, I the first day of thesis okay basically production didn't go very well especially pre-production didn't go very well mm. a lot of things just went wrong in pre-production and I've never been so tired on a first day of shoot never been so tired like physically tired I was physically and mentally tired on my first day of shoot and um and that's that's just not the, the, the that's not that's just not right and in fact yeah. i did not use anything for my first day my first day is like it never happened there's oh no... it was that bad yeah yeah it wow. was just i mean like technically it was fine but i just uh, i i just didn't get uh what i wanted and uh i'm, I'm being very <laughs> transparent about my experience here but i was so I was so devastated at the, at the end of the first day that on the second day I uh, I woke up and I I didn't want to go on set. I mean, obviously I went to set. I knew I was going to go on set, um, but I I had this this thing because things were not were not going very well. But on the second day things went much better. Mm -hmm. uh, things actually worked out. Well, you uh, you're saying it like it was just like acts of god and nature but you you're the director so you must have changed your like the way you approach it on the second day right yeah definitely i mean i um we did a scene a sequence that was that i thought about a lot and i think that that helped because um it was a scene in which i was not i don't know um I don't know. To, I don't know. I, I I think I was. I felt very secure in in some ways, and that m allowed me to regain uh, confidence. And uh, I also, you know, as soon as I got on set, I was like, I need to do this. And yeah, this it was the most important sequence of the film. So um, I just obviously worked really hard, and uh, that day, and things things went went better. Mm -hmm. After that day, things were looking a bit better. On the third day, I got a fever, and then on oh the my fourth God. day, I had like a I don't know in 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 America, it's like thirty eight degree fever Ooh. Celsius, which is how much is that in Fahrenheit? Like eighty? I don't remember. I, I that's don't know. probably it's got to be night in the close to hundred because that's when you're sick, right? Yeah, it uh it was I think it was under a hundred, but it was it was pretty it was pretty bad. Um, yeah, and, that's a hundred thirty eight is a hundred point four. That's oh really? Oh, okay. That's a well, fever, yeah. Yeah. And um and uh, but that I, I I just I just went outside. It was nice because one of the actresses was uh Bo Garrett. Uh from uh, I, I I know that name. What do I know that name? Yeah, she did she did a lot of things. She did a lot of TV. She was in in uh, Throne, I think. She was in uh, The Good Doctor, she was uh she did a lot of things. She's a very known uh, face, and she was just so nice. So she she brought me soup, and <laughs> she got me she got me her <laughs> medicines and stuff like that. And then she got sick as well. She had to leave <laughs> earlier. Uh, uh, a lot of small things. Sounds so, like it was cursed. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things. And then after when we were preparing for additional photography, we were not able to do that. So a lot of things went wrong with this. Yeah. With some, so I realized that things were not going well multiple times because. It, go, it, it goes wrong in pre-production. Then I thought, maybe I can make it work. Then it goes wrong on set. I think, may, ah, now it's going better. Let's see. But the truth is that when you add add up everything, it, 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 it's, it's going to affect the final result. And, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. It yeah. Be... I mean, it's, you know, it is a school. So that is a learning, <laughs> a teachable moment. You know, you learn from that process. I know... The problem is like we everybody puts so much emphasis on thesis and it's like your one chance to make that movie and it's going to launch your career and that's not 100% true and it is you know the, just because something doesn't turn out the way you wanted it doesn't mean like you are 
a bad filmmaker. You know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's kind of like how you deal with it. And then I think that shows a lot that, you know, you stepped up the second day and, you know, that's that's the important lesson that you learned. You could have been crushed like throughout. Yeah, I mean, it, it's also, I think also the the movie didn't go to huge festivals, but it did go to a, a bunch of festivals and also won awards and stuff like that. So it wasn't like, like it was, it wasn't quiet to the festival. Right. Uh, run was not quiet and it also lo- uh, w- helped me a lot with my visa for example and stuff like that so obviously there are positive things sure uh, um, can... but there's there's how you feel about it and then it's not yeah. it doesn't represent you as as what you want to do yeah so then um, coming out then did you want to immediately like get another film under your belt like yeah i yeah. did i did another film um there was just a different experience the one that you mentioned aquatic you so um there was a different experience because it was it was clearly rushed. We kind of did it everything very quickly, but I will say that in that movie, I think I wanted to just not care about. It's gonna sound weird, but about the result, um, I think maybe I felt a lot of pressure from thesis and and this has to work, this has to work, this has to work. That for that movie, I felt I just want to enjoy this process, um, and uh, and I loved it. I love being on set, and uh, I actually I also really liked the movie. Um, I think the movie has some technical problems related to Sicily and the fact that it's difficult to find people in Sicily to help you do things. Um, but it was right. great. It was a production AFI Sicily. People from AFI came to Sicily to shoot the movie. That's really cool. Then that's that's exciting for them. I, yeah, I saw a bunch of AFI people on the in the crew. Yeah, yeah, um, and uh, and mixed with people from from Palermo. And it was such a beautiful experience, a really beautiful experience. But that's so important and so wise of you to to think like, I just needed to fall in love with the process again, right? To, to remind myself that I like doing it and mm-hmm. not be attached to the outcome because the last process was painful. Yeah, I mean, it was not so much that I needed to remind myself because I knew it. It was more about, I want to experience it again and I wanted to 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 feel like the project is 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 on my hands um and the project was beautiful because i gave myself the opportunity to to actually improvise on set we we, we had like a whole sequence in the in the film that is completely improvised improvised doesn't mean that the actors improvised meaning that we we literally improvise scenes uh we very cassavetes yeah it was just it was just amazing there is this uh, uh the day before <laughs> it's funny because when we started filming, we still didn't have a location. Uh, and uh, at night, so after filming, we will go around uh, with, the, with the producers to look for this location in this small town in Sicily. We didn't find it. And at some point I said, can I curse? <laughs> yeah, please. I said, fuck it. We're not going to, we're not going to, we're going to, we're not going to shoot that movie, that, uh, sorry, that scene. We're just going to replace uh, that that scene with an with another sequence and that's now my favorite sequence in the movie i just love that sequence it's it's very simple it's just about this this simple dialogue between between daughter and and father that is it plays in the background and there is this young woman that is just walking in the streets in sicily and you hear children playing in the background and all this stuff and then she reaches the the beach it might sound a little cheesy i, I don't think it, it actually is if you watch it um but that was that was that was a beautiful experience and the actors in that in in this movie are actually amazing yeah all, the actors in all the... locals in sicily yeah actors that were actually pretty pretty big in sicily and oh. one of them became is it's has become pretty like kind of not very big but kind of big in in italy uh the same year i think she went to venice uh, the red carpet in, in venice and all this stuff and she did a bunch of feature films in the last few years she'll be uh she'll be on the next season of stranger things i assume <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah that, that that should that i should suggest that but did that go against like what your traditional style was of like a uh, very controlled and scripted and like you knew the plan was this new for you um I th- it was a new thing. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I'm usually very like, I, I do allow for, 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 you know, improv and all this stuff on set. Um, I think I, I, that one was, was the film in which I felt the most free 
uh, for sure. I don't. I wouldn't say it was very different from what I do um, usually. I think it's it, it just uh, it was an extreme expression of what I usually do. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay, great. I want to see it. You got to send it to me. <laughs> I'm not gonna send it to you. <laughs> I want to see it <laughs> because uh, because as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, or maybe I don't know how you're gonna edit this. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned it, um, but yeah, I do have a problem with like showing my work. Uh, mm. I do have a problem with you know it's uh, part of the process of <laughs> being yeah. a filmmaker. Yeah, I just I just hate uh, when like at AFI every time I show my film. I had anxiety. I would never watch it in the theater, obviously, and I would just stay out and I will have anxiety the whole time. I will spend like those 20 minutes with anxiety just running around the FI while everyone was watching my movie. <laughs> uh, it was horrible. Uh, so you don't you don't want to sit in there and feel how an audience reacts to your movie? No. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Uh, I did it only once, which was that that film I made in London, uh, and I watched it with my mom next to Ooh. me. Um, but it was actually beautiful. It's, it was so funny because my mom, for that movie, my mom had, had seen it three times. Like it was the third time she she was gonna watch it. She first watched it in on my computer, and she had no reaction. Then she watched it a second time. I don't remember. Ah, yeah, and then now there's like a slightly bigger screen mild reaction then we watch it on uh, on the big screen and she cries next to me um oh, that's beautiful it was, it was beautiful uh, it was a very beautiful yeah but do you think that it, it's important for a filmmaker to feel their movies with audiences like you do make it or unless you're just making films for therapy to get things out of your system but that you know does not sustain a career mm -hmm. do you do you, is it important for a filmmaker to know you know, to know what the how the audience reacts to your work, I I do think it's very important. I think, uh, uh, in fact, I think it's something that I have to get over with. I, I mean, it's it, it's uh, I I do think that it is very important, and I think lately I'm I'm starting to, um, I don't know. I guess um, with Atei Five, for example, for example, all the movie I made. Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't have an answer. I, I have an answer in the sense that I do think it's important. Uh, I think it's just something I need to work on myself. Yeah. I need to overcome this this anxiety. Uh, so you had the anxiety. You wouldn't go in the theater and watch it, but but I, I assume we're talking about narrative workshop. You had to sit on the stage and listen to people talk about your film, right? How, uh, yeah. how was that? I was in bed for two weeks after that. Ah, uh, wait, wait, wait. Narrative workshop, you're not talking about my thesis. You're talking about first year. I'm talking about first year, yeah, but if there is a what you're talking about your the thesis uh preview? Yeah. I was in bed for two weeks. Just from the reading the reviews, the responses was, and they the... were horrible. They were Oof. horrible. It, the, 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 the sad thing about that preview is that I think uh, first years tend to project their fears on the movies that they're about to see. And mm -hmm. so they just can't wait to just crush them. And uh, uh, instead of trying to actually help the filmmaker to make it better, and um, and they were not nice. They were not nice about a movie that I, I was already like feeling so heavy about, and yeah. uh, and that was uh, that was the my the most the most uh, the the worst experience that if I obviously it was not a big deal, uh, to be honest. Uh, after all, like um, but but yeah, in that moment it felt very heavy, like. Uh, I I was I just I just didn't want to get out of bed for 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 that. Um, That's an interesting way. I've I've never I've always thought about it and I talk about it and I joke about it. How the first years, you know, treat those, and I'm always like, you know, you're going to be sitting in that seat next year. What aren't you not thinking forward and you're not being helpful and you're a filmmaker. You don't know this is not, you know, saying this sucks is not a, you know, <laughs> a helpful uh, critique. Um, yeah. But saying like they're projecting their fears, that that's really interesting. I've never thought of it that way. And that's a... I mean, I think it's uh it's clear. I mean, I know also because I experienced it. Um I do I I never had like very harsh uh comments of when, when I had the preview the previews, but I know how I felt and I know that I have I was like mm -hmm, I'm gonna be like 
um and yeah it's not very it's not very helpful and um uh, because the previews are not meant for people to just crush you or meant for people to help you improve yeah. your project and um and i think it just for my for, for my film i don't know it was also because of the subject the subject the film was about this guy that uh goes to a brothel where he meets a woman that looks like his mother mm -hmm. so the subject i think uh, created also that there was something negative about just the subject i think yeah i think i remember people image. just just you just read the log line and some people were turned off like oh that's, yeah. that's gross yeah 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 um and uh, um and and i think um um they created just this negativity and so that i had like two people coming to me and apologize after that preview because they had been too harsh <laughs> and apologize them for being too harsh uh, and just maybe just created this thing it's, it's like you know i don't know if you read 1984 there's like the hate when everyone is like stand up and they hate and, <laughs> and they just yell and you just can't help it you're just in the middle and just do it as well and then maybe after you realize oh shit i just... uh, <laughs> i would say yeah like people one-on-one -on -one are great people people in a group are terrible yeah or they can be good but sometimes they're just terrible Mm -hmm. um you survived it uh congrats you, are there any like lines that you read in one of those critiques that like you burned into your brain do you remember it i actually remember only one which actually was a positive comment uh, okay. uh, but i don't know why it, it stuck with me not because of the it was positive so the movie i we spent so much time on the colors i'm actually one of the things i'm i'm very proud of, of, the, of the about the movie is the use of colors it just goes from this like uh um how do you say like artificial yellow with traces of red and then goes more into red and then goes into blue until it goes to back to yellow but it's a natural yellow i think if you see all the you know the frames of yeah the movie, actually it looks i love really nice. i love looking at movies like that yeah uh it looks very really nice and this person said uh beautiful colors um if you did it on purpose congratulations like what do you mean if you did it on purpose <laughs> i spent so much time on it's this like a compliment and an insult at the same time on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only comment that i really remember like why, why can't people just leave leave a, a compliment as a compliment i mean you're if you're you in afi purpose? you're in graduate school obviously you were making choices like yeah if you did it on purpose, it was just like, what do you mean? And what if I didn't? <laughs> then what? <laughs> then you, they you still get credit for it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, so I know this is going way too long, but we're going to, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the end. But so we'll get to the, what do you do when you graduate? Like what would those like post AFI? I know there wasn't long before COVID, but there was some time. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Uh, yeah. Right after FI, um, what was I doing? Uh, yeah, actually, I have a. I don't remember exactly. I know I was working on the film, so uh, on this new short film. So that right, even before FI, the end of FI, I was starting to work on that. Then uh, I spent the summer working on it, on that, and then we we shot in October of twenty nineteen. Um. And then uh, um, I kept working on my feature uh, film. There's this feature film that I, I've been working on for five years. So as, I, as I mentioned, I started it with Sandy Stern at AFI. And I think probably finished it just like two weeks ago, <laughs> three weeks ago. You, you think you finished it? I mean, because I said it already twice that I finished it. So now... Right. Um, well, you're never, you're never going to be finished with it, but until... Yeah, I'm looking for a producer to because I don't have a producer right now. I'm, I'm looking for a producer to partner with uh, in order to try and find the funds to do it. It's a movie set between Italy and uh, it's sorry between um, San Francisco and Sicily. Mm -hmm. um, I did that, and then I was uh, I was I worked on some sets. Um, I don't remember. I think I did first aiding a little bit, and then I did also some second aiding because of money. Um, and then uh, I think that's what I did basically. Um, I I think my intention was to I wanted to uh, find money, <laughs> find a way to survive, and at the same time just focusing on my feature film. That's what I wanted to do. 
Um, and you had the visa thing you had to deal with also because and the visa thing. Yeah. The visa thing was a huge thing, but that I actually dealt with it properly like the year after because you have OPT, which is like working a permit for a year after AFI. Right. So I had that, but I soon had to start thinking about about that because the 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 the, the, the visa will cost ten thousand dollars. It's it takes months to prepare the application. I just reapplied for a, I re, the I did the renewal. It was two thousand pages. Pages? 2,000 pages? 2,000 pages. I mean, when I sent it the first time, it was 1,200 pages. What, you have to read 2,000 pages? Or the 2,000 pages of, of material you're giving them? Like, Yeah, 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 yeah. 2,000 pages, because it's not only, it's, all, it's not all written. It's yeah. uh, sometimes it's like, you know, articles of, and... Exactly. Oh, yeah. But still 2,000, like that's longer than the Bible. <laughs> yeah because i added uh, a lot of uh, this dubbing work that i did and mm -hmm. i did some like very big shows um i did i worked on uh, all of us are dead uh the korean show a lot of korean shows actually <laughs> uh, big bat the disney i worked on hellbound uh, uh, the silent sea i did a lot of things and uh and so I added articles right to all those big shows that I did. And that's like 600 pages more uh, just for those things I did. Yeah, that's uh, smart. It's kind of like you just overwhelm them with evidence and they go, yeah, okay, you're good. <laughs> yeah, no no okay. one's going to read 2,000 pages. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they don't. Absolutely. But it, it looks good. <laughs> yeah. Well, congrats on that. Um, so what was something that you come out of AFI, you start, you know, experiencing the real real world you know in your in your way what was something that you thought oh they didn't teach us that in film school hmm. um i mean that's not necessarily something that i learned to, that i thought about after afi but in general i think one of the most important component in filmmaking which is collaboration is something that maybe i don't know if it's something you can really teach um because it's very difficult because it's just about you know working with other people um but that's something that can be tricky uh and uh, how to how to just work with people how to uh, allow them to to do the best work uh they can um i think personally i was when i started i think i was this arrogant Italian kid that was uh, thought it was the new Antonioni and Fellini and uh, I was actually had a very I had a temper I, I was a little fiery and all this stuff in my collaborations uh, at, at first in London the first couple of movies were not very good um, and I slowly learned and I think it was just uh, the maturity just you mature as a person and you learn how to deal with people um, but yeah, that's definitely a very important aspect um, of uh, of filmmaking. One definitely one of the most important ones that is difficult to teach, and they do so really teach you. Did that got knocked out of your system? The uh, I'm the next, like you know, Antonioni. You, you know, that that got knocked out before you came to AFI, or yeah, did you, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was. I think uh, arrogance comes from insecurity, and when I was making movies that that didn't really feel like they belonged to me. I had, uh, I was covering up my insecurity about what I was doing and what I was writing with this arrogance. And when I started, I, when I started to discover and, and, and understand uh, what I was actually trying to achieve and I was actually trying to discover myself at the same time, I was able to let go of that arrogance because um, I had less insecurity due to the fact that I was <laughs> I was coming out a little bit as a as a person. I was I was finding out what what, what was I all about in a way. Yeah, yeah, I see that a lot in uh, you know at AFI um, mm -hmm. and imposter syndrome, which is very connected to that, right? People, yeah, definitely trying too hard to present a certain way because they don't want to look like they don't know everything, but. I'm always like, that's why you're in school because you don't know anything. Everything. So let, let's all admit that's why we're here to learn. Yeah. Totally. Uh, were there any uh, mentors um, that really helped you like through the process, through AFI and post AFI? Yeah. I mean, um, AFI was definitely, there are two, Harrison and uh, uh, Sandy. 
I think Harrison because she's one of the most caring uh, <laughs> and uh, and loving people I know, and uh, um, I still talk to her pretty often because she was just she was my mentor for the thesis, mm -hmm. and uh, and she was just uh, she was just amazing. I could call her anytime uh, if I had a problem. And um, she obviously, I will, I will talk to her about the the movie a lot for hours. She did more than she needed to, and uh, with me, and uh, and I, for me that was very valuable. Uh, and this is why I still have a relationship with her. Um, Sandy, uh, Sandy was my mentor for basically every movie in the first year. Yeah. And uh, and I requested I was in the, in the second year, you know, when you in, when you do the feature writing uh, class, right. um, they give you different mentors. And I was with Barry, uh, but I requested to be <laughs> with Sandy. Wow. How did Barry uh, take that? Barry. He was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that I was with Barry, to be honest. I requested yeah. from the beginning. I was like, can I go with Sandy? And we're like, oh no, but I'm, I'm sure everything will be. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he said. Uh, and then I was with, uh, so I, I was with him, and you know, I I met Sandy a few days ago, and he was like, "How is it going with your movie?" And I said, "I think I finished it, like I told you." And he said, "Send it to me," and it will be the third time he reads my feature. That's amazing. And you graduated four years ago. So. Yeah. And he still and he still does that. So that's very That's really cool that you found two people that are like want to continue this like relationship and, mm -hmm. and see you. Yeah. To be honest, I, I tried to convince no, I didn't try. I kind of suggested jokingly uh Sandy to produce my movie, but it didn't take that. <laughs> it did, it didn't respond to that joke. Well, he hasn't read the new draft yet. So <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that will change. What's the, what? What? What kind of budget are we talking about for this? It's not very expensive. I think. Uh, I think I can do it with five hundred k. Best will be two, three million. So obviously, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not a huge budget. You gonna work with uh, some AFI people? <laughs> Got to use a cinematographer. <laughs> I mean, all my friends are cinematographers, so, so uh, there are there, there are a few. Um, yeah I, I would love to um i think working with AFI people it will be probably mostly cinematographers and uh, probably editor uh from afi too uh skylar zan and yeah. and uh, that worked on my thesis and uh, one other project um at a5 right and yeah Let's see so when when uh young you know, aspiring filmmakers come to you and they ask, like, should I go to film school? Not specifically AFI, mm -hmm. but just in general, since you've been to two, what is your advice? My advice is to, you know, I don't, obviously I've never been to another films, another school, another like, you know, low school or anything like that. So I don't know how right. that is, but I will imagine that it's difficult, different from film school. From film school, you need to, you are the one who needs to, take what you need and and just leave the rest i think a lot of people think they go to school and go to afi and afi makes them great filmmakers and that's just the wrong approach uh because you need to make yourself uh, a great filmmaker and you afi has a lot of ways that, that they can help you and you just have to pick the way and just remember to to stay yourself I think the problem also that I that I notice is either people complaining a lot about a bunch of things. Uh, they are not given this. They're not given that. They're not given that, and uh, and uh, people sometimes losing a little bit themselves because they tr they they tend to become like one thing. Um, they how do you say to how do you say. Um, I don't know. They kind of lose their their touch because they're trying to like uh, make their the teachers happy or like you know uh, or the other like fellows. That. They're trying to impress the other fellows. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like when they you're given feedbacks on on a script, uh, you can't take all the feedbacks. No, it's uh, it, it, or, you know, it's it's not it's not math. <laughs> it's it's, it's no it's not a, a science. It's like you need to preserve yourself, uh, and the same thing with 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 
film school, you're going to meet a lot of mentors, a lot of people that are going to tell you a lot of things, but you just have to stay focused on what you want to do. What is it? What is it that you want to do? Because people are not in your mind. They don't see what you see. They don't feel what you feel. So uh, take what you need from all that and, and leave the rest. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. I feel like the people that are most disappointed with the experience are the people that came in expecting this place to just give it to them. Right. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, that's why I'm paying you. It's transactional. And you know, your exp it's life is all expectations and, you know, and then reality and your expectations were you wanted to make movies and you wanted to meet people and you did both. So you seem satisfied, right. And, and people that people that you're going to keep working with, which is great. And the making all those films helped you, you know, make, make made you a better filmmaker. Yeah, I, I I'm very happy with with what I what I did uh, my my journey. Obviously, being a uh, in this industry is very difficult, and yeah. um, that's that's undeniable. But I'm very happy when you know when people ask me because I did have uh, in the last two months I have two different people calling me to ask me if they should apply um, specifically to AFI, and what I will tell them is exactly this: um, as long as I also said uh, um, that obviously I can talk for AFI in my ears. I know schools can change and stuff like that. Um, but then, exactly this: you need to take what you what you need. You don't expect uh, them to do it for you. Yeah, that that part hasn't changed, and I don't think that part yeah. ever will change. Yeah. Um. So the last thing then would be you've been searching for the truth, truth in your work, in yourself. How's that search going? Um, I mean, you know, this movie that that I that I've been working on for a long time. Uh, that's I think that's that's the best thing I've ever written, and uh, um, I think uh, it took so long because it was a movie again related to my family, and. Uh, it's a movie that I started writing without knowing uh, how the structure, I didn't know what was gonna actually happen in the film. And that's why it took me so long because I knew only the next scene. That's, that's the only thing I will decide, the next scene. But I think for this movie in particular, I had to do this because um, movies, I mean, if you make this kind of movies, there are a way to, to discover yourself and to, to discover how you feel about yourself, about the people <laughs> close to you. And it allows you to get to get to know yourself better and to get to know the people uh, close to you better. And um, and I think that allows you to get to a certain truth. And uh, um, and I think it's very beautiful. And this process of writing has been frustrating, obviously, sometimes, um, but but very beautiful. So um, I'm very happy with it. Uh, then if I answered your, your question. No, that, that, that that's a really... Uh thoughtful answer yeah and an interesting experiment um the way the way to write something yeah. is to just think of what happens next mm -hmm. and and since you've written it you know rewritten it a few times now and probably over many years right it probably yeah. changes like what you think of what should happen next or what you want to happen next mm -hmm. yeah of course but then it, because obviously obviously you change over time and so then the story automatically will change you know the story is mostly about it was supposed to be mostly about my parents uh, and then there is also a kid but then uh, it also became not only about my childhood but it became also about me now and so the figure of my father became uh, also me um for example and uh, because it's a story of, of this family the guy is an italian immigrant in in the states um well the the, the mother is, is american um so yeah it's interesting you know it's funny because in the past when people will say like oh i worked for, on this script for seven years i'll be like yeah sure <laughs> what do you mean seven years what are you writing every day for seven years and then i understand it's like you write uh, intense moments and then you don't touch it for a few months and then you go back into it and all this stuff yeah yeah well congrats and uh you know, after Sandy reads it and gives some notes, then <laughs> then send it over to Schwartzy. <laughs> um, and you know, maybe we can we should talk and see how we can get it to. You know, you're looking for a producer. Um, mm -hmm. 
that that's the hardest part. I assume you're looking for a producer that has financing, that kind of producer. I'm looking for honestly, I'm looking for someone that is uh, very passionate about the film. Uh, I'm not looking for someone that has like money or anything. I'm just looking for someone that is uh, uh, that is wants to make that movie, is passionate mm -hmm. about the movie, and is ready to partner with me to 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 make it. Um, I think that has been for me the most difficult part: finding producers that actually are very passionate about just just movies and. Uh, and about uh, movies that are not the classic, you know, now there are a lot of Avengers movies and all this stuff um, that are not necessarily that, but they're, it's, it's definitely a movie that's a bit more it's European. Uh, yeah. Style. It's not uh, very American, I would say. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Well, that's the beauty of AFI is like, we're so international. So now, you know, with all these alumni over the years, they're all over the world. And there are, we have a lot of European people to uh connect you with so yeah maybe anyway. uh, I'll, I'll, i should didn't think about it but the, yeah it's it, i should i should just come over <laughs> and, and talk to you you should yeah we, we should we should talk